I am so pleased to be joined by Congressman Matt Rosendale of Montana. Congressman, thank you so much for being here. It is really a thrill to be here with you, Virginia. Thank you. Well, it is a great day here in Washington, D.C., because literally as we speak, the March for Life is happening. There are thousands of people walking from the National Mall up to the Supreme Court standing for life. Congressman, why is the life issue so important to you? That is uh, second to life, nothing else matters, quite frankly. That is the most important thing that we work on in Congress. When I was in the legislature in the uh, state of Montana, it is the most important subject for us. That is the only thing that we should be protecting. Uh, I do believe that life be begins at conception. Uh, I'm glad that we finally have uh, our friends across the aisle recognizing that we should depend upon science. And if we do depend upon science, then they will uh, join me and say that there is a new person created at conception that has a separate DNA, different from the mother, different from the father, and that is when life begins, and we should do everything we can to protect it. Mm -hmm. You recently wrote on Twitter that the pro-life movement is truly a battle for the soul of the nation. Why do you say that? Because we have to begin to embrace this uh, culture of life instead of a culture of death. It's so easy to dispose of everything that's imperfect, uh, that is wore out, uh, that we don't find a use for any longer. And, and that's unfortunately where society is today. Mm -hmm. But we have to recognize that every life has value, mm -hmm. uh, regardless of how imperfect it is. Um, and, and that's what I, I focus on. Yeah. Well, and you mentioned society and culture. You know, I think right now we have kind of two two big uh, struggles, maybe, or challenges for the pro-life movement in front of us. Of course, there's the legal side. We're waiting for the Supreme Court to come out with its ruling on Dobbs, which could overturn Roe v. Wade. But then there's the cultural side. How do we actually go about creating a culture of life all across America? We're doing that today. So I, uh, as we discussed earlier, I had some of the youths from Montana. They came and joined me in my office at 9 o'clock this morning. So we started off the day with a, a very, very uh, great message, okay? And um, that is where it begins. And, and as I walked out there and joined the folks that were gathering up to get, prepare for the parade today or the march today, uh, the ratio of young people to more mature adults like myself was about 10 to 1. So we are winning over the hearts and minds of the youths. They recognize that life does begin at conception. They recognize that uh, all life is not perfect, but that, that each one of them offers something. They bring something to offer to society and that we should be trying to protect each and every one of them. And, and that's what they embrace. So we have to move those hearts and minds and then just make sure that the legislation follows it and protects it. Yeah, well, you're absolutely right. It's so encouraging to see so many young people out standing for life during the March for Life. It's really, really, really great to see. Now, I think one thing that we can all feel a little bit frustrated over is that year after year, we see that the corporate media doesn't really cover the March for Life. Why mm -hmm. do you think that is? Uh, I think that the uh, national media has demonstrated that they are part of this uh, leftist-leaning Marxist uh, agenda that has been pushed upon our country, and, and it's sad. And uh, when we allow the media to become so big and so strong that they can choke out the voices of uh, opposition, and that is a major problem. Uh, you see right now in Congress, these are the things that we can do statutorily to make sure that we don't uh, silence that message, okay? Yeah. To make sure that we can embrace this culture of life is, is to make sure that the uh, large media organizations don't stifle those voices that do support life, that do want to make sure that we uh, protect it at every aspect and every stage along, along the line. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I think the million dollar question that so many in the pro-life movement are asking right now is will we see Roe v. Wade overturned this year? We're waiting for the Supreme Court, probably likely this summer, they'll come up with their, come out with their ruling on the Dobbs versus Jackson Women's Health Organization. They heard arguments in December for that case. What are your thoughts? Do you think that this is a year where we will see the life issue changed in America? I do think it's gonna get changed. Um, I was really pleased that on the day that they listened to the arguments back and forth, the Supreme Court listened to the arguments, I was able to listen to the, um, the Solicitor General 
uh, answer questions afterwards uh, rather than listen to the pundits on, on the news stations and give his reaction to how the uh, testimony went. And that was very uh, positive reaction that everybody had. Uh, but I think everybody really needs to keep in mind if the Supreme Court does uh, rule in favor um, of the pro-life movement on this particular case, that's going to turn it over to the states. Hmm. And so our work will not be done. Yeah. We will have to go state by state and make sure that the states then in turn pass pro-life legislation to protect those babies as well. And how are you all defending life in Montana? Montana is setting the trend for the nation. We have a uh, Republican um, House, we have a Republican Senate, and we have a pro-life governor, Greg Gianforte, that is doing a lot of good work. They signed into law four separate pieces of legislation just this past session to make sure that they uh, protect life. And, and I'm anticipating that once the Supreme Court uh, does overturn Roe v. Wade, that we'll probably see some more. Uh, the one thing that we still don't have is the uh, parental notification. And, and that is going to be a very big part of the pro-life movement in, in any state, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. Explain that a little bit more. What do you mean by parental notification? So if you have a minor that, that enters into one of these uh, clinics that wants to have an abortion, uh, to make sure that if they are a minor, that they have parental notification. We require parental notification for a tattoo for Pete's sakes, for, for a piercing. Uh, if someone's only 16 years of age. And why in the world will we not require parental notification for some young lady that's going to have such a serious medical procedure done uh, that could cause her uh, problems in the future, whether it's physical or just the, the mental uh, stresses that she'll be dealing with in the future. Yeah, yeah. Congressman, the last question I want to ask you, what is your message to the men of America who maybe feel a little bit intimidated to engage on the life issue because they've heard for so long as a man that they're not allowed to engage on this issue. What would you say to them? They are, uh, should be absolutely involved in this process as well because they have participated in the, the creation of this child. They have participated in the creation of this child. So they should be informed, they should participate, and they should make sure that their voices are heard too. Because there's a lot of men that find out after the fact that a um, child that they, that they created uh, was aborted. And that gives them uh, problems going into the future as well. So speak up. Don't be silenced. That's, that's what we have to uh, do with all of these arguments nowadays. Excellent. Congressman Rosendale, Montana, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having me in.